it, it, this is nature. This is wild. Wild rice harvesting, just going out there and doing things that doesn't make sense. I can't swim and wild rice grows in water. Picture paradise and hell, but wet. And with a lot of bug. The swamp starts eating you up. It's beautiful and terrifying all at the same time. It's not everybody's cup of tea to harvest wild rice. Take one. Right on. Uh, uh, my name is Gavin Carnegie. I'm Dawson Cameron, and uh, we're wild rice guys. You were supposed to say that together, dude. <laughs> the end part, say Aww. together. Together, we are wild, wild rice guys. guys. Nailed it! It's a family thing. We third generation farmer. Just you're born into it. I was 18 months old, first time on the boat. It's just what I know. And plus, all the teachers in school, they said, if you don't get your education, what are you gonna do? You're gonna be a rice farmer. So I gotta live up to what I say. Again, it's a lot of just keeping it in the family. Keep the tradition going is the biggest thing for me. And the fact that I just love outdoors and love working with my hands, everything just kind of works together. Back in 1980 was when uh, grandfather started. He was a trapper and came across an area with some farmers there and started into it and it just kind of went from there. Started growing and grew it into what it is now. I've got family who are grain farmers. I've got family who are ranchers, but it's just something about the wild rice that just keeps coming, calling me back. The lakes are north of Hudson Bay, Saskatchewan. You gotta go about an hour north, you run out of cell service when you're in absolutely nowhere and you can't find your way out, then you found us. Nobody's excavated it, sloped it, nothing like that. The only ones who do any uh, sort of landscaping out there is wildlife and beavers. We have uh, 246 acres that uh, Wild Rice Guys harvests. Well, normal rice is rice, wild rice is actually a grass grows in the wetlands, we don't gotta reseed. Well, essentially wild rice grows wild. Because as you're going over with your header and your airboats and stuff, not all of it lands in the boat. What's right falls off, sometimes it lands in the boat, sometimes it doesn't, and it reseeds itself, it grows wild. Every year, it just keeps coming back. You can put back into an area seed, which we like to do, because we don't just like to reap out of one area. You gotta always give back. I ain't a historian, and all I know is what I've been told by the First Nations that harvest with us. It's been around for generally like thousands of years. It likes flowing water, so it aerates the soil. Yeah, a foot to four feet. After four feet, it will kind of grow, but it's kind of iffy because the sun can't get to the seed. You also have to see if, it's, if you have to lease it from the crown, then you have to put in the application, and it all goes through, then you have to get some seed, throw it out, and then the rice decides if it wants to grow or not. It's not up to you. See, it takes, it's kind of like all year because you, it, the water needs to drop below five degrees for the seed to germinate. If the seed doesn't get below that temperature, then in the spring it won't, it'll sit dormant. And it can sit dormant for up to five years, five to 10 years, I believe. In the winter time, it drops below five degrees, germinates the seed. Once the spring comes, then the seed will sprout comes up, goes into a floating leaf stage. June starts to lift, then it'll sprout, gets tillers, and then it pollinates, and then we harvest. We get up at the end of August to get everything ready. We wanna go out there, we wanna check all the fields, see the growth, see the different stages that the rice is at. Then we also wanna check and see the water levels to see if we can get in there during harvest. Because if, if I get stuck now, the guaranteed when I'm harvesting, I'm gonna get stuck. So as you're going through the channels, there's drop-offs, there's sticks sticking out of the bank. You know, it's whatever the beavers do, whatever wild nature does. <laughs> I jump up into a beaver hunt. <laughs> Whoa! Ah, not very many things make it out of the rice field alive. Hey! Oh, it is super easy to get disoriented. For me, anyways, because, well, I just never know where I'm going on the best of days. Everybody wants to come be a rice farmer. Oh, yeah, I want to get on that boat. And, yeah, it's a great time when you're on the boat until you're stuck or you're sunk 
Now you gotta walk back a couple kilometers through a swamp and mosquitoes and bugs, they're eating you. Oh yeah, flipping the boat sucks. It's not bad when it's empty, but when you're loaded with rice and then you lose all that rice, that sucks. Wouldn't like to go out there by yourself. The swamp starts eating you up. Yeah, it's just, it's beautiful and terrifying all at the same time. Peanut butter and bread. And mainly because that's all I need to remember to bring. I couldn't believe that you ate a whole season eating just peanut butter and bread. For myself, it's uh, it's gotta be bean and uh, bread. That's the, the can of beans. Maple brown sugar is a good one. That's probably my favorite, I think. I have no idea. Everything was looking good. It was coming in smooth. And then I woke up not standing anymore. Not too sure what happened, but we ripped a hole in the brand new boat. So now we know trailers are all getting refitted with rubber. So what I want to say is that it looks fantastic, looks absolutely amazing. I'm super excited for harvest, but I'm not going to say that because every time I say that, something bad happens and then it can be a crop failure. So there's a, there's a lot of time in this month for things to happen. Like if it misses its pollinating that one week, eh, eh, then you got all this rice and empty halts. So we go up there in September, we get set up, and we are checking the rice every day because when the rice is ready, the rice is ready and it's go time. And uh, we're harvest all through September into October. The harvesting process is labor intensive. There are some lakes where you have to go in and portage a canoe in to harvest it by hand. We have airboats, and the airboats are uh, they're about 16 feet long, and they have a header on the front. As we drive, it's at a slight angle, the rice sways onto each bar. The ripe rice falls into the header, the other rice stays on the plant, ripens up so you can get about two to three picks per harvest. Once the header's full, it goes into the boat, push it back, you can get about four to six headers, depending on the year, in the boat, bring it back to land, either bag it there and then transport it, or you can put it into a grain truck. After it comes off, we take it to the LaRange Wild Rice Corporation and they will dry it out, de-haul it. We make the 660 mile round trip to them just for the point of the quality. They do hire a lot, like all First Nations, to come and work there and they're really good for the community. Most people that I talk to have nothing bad to say about the LaRange Wild Rice Corporation. They're really good to work for. Some kernels actually dry out properly and screen out to a nice long grain of rice. Some rice gets broken up in the transportation and screening and cooking process. We also take the broken rice and run it through a stone mill to make wild rice flour. We got a small little facility we bag in. But we do sell bulk, like uh, the 55 pound bags. They sell into health food stores or distribute it wherever they like. But then we like to come to the farmer's market because we get to interact with people, get the customers uh, feedback. We know what our product's like and it's just like a nice little, it fills our time for during the winter when we don't have much to do. It's slowly been catching on now. People are starting to get more into the organic, the healthy foods. So it's, people are really starting to come around to the wild rice. It's a unique product. It's got its own personality. Every year's a different year. You think that you know what you're gonna do and what the rice is gonna do, and then all of a sudden it throws you a curveball and does something completely different, throws you off your game. So you're constantly on your toes, and I love the challenge. Yeah, it's gluten-free, it's a grass, so it'd be like in the same thing as like a, almost like a wheat grass, you'd say, but yeah, it's a cereal crop, it, uh, and it's considered a superfood as well too. But the wild rice, being a grass, you're able to have it. And diabetics, because it is higher carbs, but it's a slow releasing carb, so then it doesn't turn it straight into sugars. So you're able to keep it longer. Uh, if you've never eaten wild rice before, uh, I would first off tell you, you need a big pot, because you'll only cook with a smaller pot once. It's a unique flavor. It's got a nuttier, beautiful aroma to it. You have to try it to just understand it. And it's fulfilling. And like, it's not like uh, when, you, when you eat ripe, white rice, like you eat it and then half hour later you're, you're hungry again. Like you eat this, you are satisfied, you're full and you're ready to go work another 16 hour day. My favorite dish is wild rice by itself as a side. It goes great with a steak. Wow, I love it all. Like the wild rice, I got Thanksgiving when my grandma made wild rice stuffing. Oh man, like 
you, you take the wild rice instead of the bread, it just throws that whole nother flavor in it, it just it blows you away. You can always contact us at wildriceguys.com. On our website is a Facebook page, contact us through there. You can also find our pictures and uh, phone numbers there as well. Yeah, we have uh, all of our products that you can order right off the site itself. And, uh, or you can come to the Regina's or Saskatoon farmers markets, we're always there. You can also get in Regina from local and fresh and body fuel. They sell our products as well too. My passion is working hard and just being outside. Putting him to work, that's a great passion. Because then I don't have to do it. Wild rice guys, we harvest wild rice. <laughs> If you have program ideas you'd like to see on Max TV Local, let us know at sastel.com slash local.